typically we come to you on Wednesday, but yesterday had a, a full applications team meeting here. Um, had Samantha Maribal in, uh, Mr. Mark Davis, Nate Moore, Scott Stingle. Um, Nate actually is joining me today. He's going to be my uh, kind of my video DJ. And today we're going to talk to you about hooping caps and digitizing for caps. Um, know that we just did this about a month or so ago. But this is a pretty advanced um, application that a lot of people um, have a tendency to struggle with. So we wanted to do another one, try to throw some more pointers out to answer some more questions on it, and also explore some different uh, um, types of embroidery methods that um, our placement methods that are going on in the industry and make sure that you guys have the tools to be able to handle um, what your customers are asking for. So. Once again, if you have questions on hooping caps or digitizing for caps, please post them in the comments, and Nate and Scott will actually uh, be responding to those. So today, let's go ahead and start, and this is really cool. Nate got me hooked up, really neat. So we're going to switch over to the screen, and I'm going to show some digitizing methods. So Nate, if we can do that, thank you. All right, so one of the methods that I wanted to first talk to you about is actually um, placement of a design where it's not in the center seam of the cap. So this, uh, this red crosshair would represent kind of the, the center of a cap. And in some cases, um, there's a lot of popularity on doing embroidery like over a panel. And typically, it's the, uh, as you're wearing the cap, it's the right panel. Or if you're looking at the cap, it would be the left panel. And I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. But we want to take this flag and we actually want to place that so that when we sew it on the machine, it's actually in the right place and we're not having to find anything other than the center of the seam of the cap. So we would take and put the laser on that position and we would be good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take and flip the cap. Um, I like to use the mirroring, so I'll click on horizontal mirroring and then vertical mirroring. And that will take and um, position that design upside down so that when we send it to the ma machine, we don't have to rotate that design around. So I'm going to take and position this over the left panel as I'm looking at the hat. So the bill of the hat would be up here towards the top of the screen. And so I'm going to take and position that where I believe it would make sense. Um, and for a minute here, um, Nate, if we could pop back to a, a screen uh, so I can show a hat. And so what I'm going to do is this is kind of what I'm talking about is where the embroidery is over as the wearer. It's over the right panel. Um, but as I look at it, it's on the left panel. Um, what I want to do is I want to take and use this handy little uh, uh, tailor's tape that Nate let me borrow, and I'm trying to do it as I show you, but I want to find the center of this design, um, and it would be for the flag in the case of what I'm doing in Design Shop. So I want to come over, in this case, it's about two inches from the center seam. So what that allowed me to do is as I put the hat onto the machine, instead of trying to have to find where the center of that panel is, all I have to do is put the laser um, just barely off the center seam, as always, because the laser comes in from a side. We want to position that over just a little bit where the needle is centered right down that seam. What will happen is when I press start, then the machine will move over and position that design exactly where I want it to be. So once again, let me back up. I'm going to take and measure over how far I want that to be over on the panel. If I look at the whole panel, that whole panel is about three and three quarter inches. Oh, sorry. Three and three quarter inches. So I'm measuring it with a tape. Um, Taylor's tape is really good to have so it bends and flexes with the, the garment or the hat that you're doing. And so if I want that to be in the center, I could divide three and three quarters. Um, let's see if I can do that in my head. One and a uh, half plus and eight, so uh, what are we at? One and five sixteenths, I believe it is. No, nine sixteenths. One and one inch and nine sixteenths over. 
Um, so then let's switch back over to design shop. And so what I can do is I can take from that center seam or the crosshair in design shop and I can come over to where I'm about um, and once again I'm doing the math roughly in my head here you could do it with a calculator and probably be a lot better but about 1.642 is pretty close for the flag and that will take and center that flag when we load it into the machine yep go ahead Nate um, you can also buy uh, Taylor's tape measures like that, that that measure from the center out so you don't have to do the math Oh, cool. um, I just didn't have one here so sorry about that no problem so Hopefully you heard that. Great uh, to know that there's a Taylor's tape that does center out. This one doesn't, um, but really good tip from Nate. So what I'm going to do now is before we leave this screen capture, I'm going to go ahead and send this design over to the machine. Um, and once again, on the uh, EMTs, um, uh, as well as the XTSs and the XTs, you can just in Design Shop, you can do File, Machine, Load Design, and that will take and uh, send our design over to uh, Melka OS or depending on what version of software you're running, it might say a Maya OS. Um, I'm going to go ahead and center this design or center the hoop. Sorry, not the design, center hoop. Let me back up a second. So a lot of people have confusion on this and that just brought it to my attention. There's two different centers in uh, the OS software. There's center hoop which is going to take and center the hoop, not the design. So it's going to take and move the, the hoop to its center point. And then over here on the far right, there's a center design. Now what that will do is it'll take and it's almost like loading the design into Design Shop, pressing the center button, and it'll center the design in the hoop. So we don't want to center the design, we just want to center the hoop. So I'll go ahead and push that machine moved and now we can see if I jump back to design shop we can see that its position in design shop matches what is in Melka OS so our position is correct and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hoop a hat and we'll talk about hooping hats at the same time kinda kill them one bird or two birds with one stone once again we're looking at doing a uh, kind of an off-panel or off-center embroidery. This is really popular right now. Um, a lot of uh, like the ski companies and even I've started seeing um, breweries. Yes, thanks Nate. A lot of different companies starting to off-center off their designs. And so this is a, a pretty good method that, um, you know, if, if you're not using it um, and you're looking for something new or the customer's looking for something new with their design, you might talk about um, positioning over a panel instead of, you know, centering a design. Let me show an example of that. So, for example, this guy here is centered on the hat, where this one here is just over one panel, just so that we're all on the same page. Um, also, I wanted to mention something. These hats here, I we've started at the applications team. We've started playing with Richardson hats. Um, these are Richardson hats. They sew really well. The nice thing about the Richardson hats is they're actually very consistent from hat to hat. One of the things that drives me nuts is you'll be sewing along and you'll get one or two hats on some of the less expensive uh, cap uh, manufacturers out there. And inside the hat, you don't realize this, you start having thread breaks or the, the cap doesn't sew as well as the last one. And so what will happen is whoever had assembled the hat will have a whole bunch of just nastiness from the material of the bill material, the crown material, and the buckram material, and then that seam that goes down the middle. They'll have this big ugly mess in here, and it's not consistent from hat to hat. Um, I say auto is pretty consistent, but I've never seen a Richardson hat um, in all the ones that I've done that's ever not been as good as one from the other so they're very consistent they're pretty expensive hats but once again you pay for what you get um, so anyways just a little tip on on Richardson if you haven't looked at them nothing to do with Melco but just a tip on cat manufacturers so we're gonna go ahead and hoop a hat 
And we'll start with the wide angle cap gauge. And so I want to talk about a couple things on this. And I just want to look and see, okay, um, so we're still on this angle. Um, let's see the cap gauge itself. Cool. So um, with this guy, there's a couple things, and, and I may be saying stuff that you guys um, as experts already know, but I want to make sure that our, our, our new users understand everything. One is that um, there's a lever on here that allows us to rotate the gauge around, which is very useful. I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, and then the stand that I'm using, we get a question, um, the last cap hooping session of where you could get this stand. Um, this is actually a hoop tech, um, EMS hoop tech stand. Um, it, I think originally it was in a different color, but we spray painted it gray because um, it was getting pretty scratched up. But it's, it's pretty handy. If you don't have a stand, um, you could always take this uh, gauge that you get with your machine and you could take and mount it to a table. The thing that I would suggest though is try to get it to where it's at a ergonomical uh, level so that for me, bending down is not an option. I've got a really bad back. So I really want it in this position where I don't have to raise my shoulders up and I don't have to bend down to get to it to, to work my cap. Something else that works really well is if you pre-cut your backing, and so this is um, uh, rolled cap backing at one point, and we just went through and cut off a whole bunch of pieces. And of course, now I've got them in different spots. Let me just put these over here. Um, what I'll do is I'll take and cut up a whole bunch of pieces of this backing, and I'll take and roll it. And the roll helps for a couple different reasons. But I'll roll it up a whole bunch of pieces, and then I'll shove it inside the cap gauge, and it comes out so that when I'm ready to hoop a cap, I can just reach in and grab a piece of backing and, and slap it on there. Um, something else that's useful, and, and a lot of people do it differently, so it's okay. Um, let me crawl over here real quick and grab something. I've got a piece of double stick tape, and um, I found that using a piece of double stick tape um, on the gauge, and so here's the double stick tape. If I take that guy off and I just stick a small piece, this might be a little too big, but you'll get the idea. If I stick a small piece onto the gauge on that lower level, so not up here, but down on this lower area, and then I put my cap frame on. So once again, this guy here is called a cap gauge, and then the part that the hoop actually goes onto is called a cap frame. So if I take and put my cap frame on there, you can see that it slides right over that sticky, and I'm gonna just uh, slap it a couple times with my finger to get a little bit of um, the sticky away from the, the glue. But I can reach in, grab a piece of backing, and then what that does is I can kind of get the backing in place and just tap on that, uh, on that um, carpet tape to hold it in place. So instead of having to put clips on it, which is a good idea, some people like to do that, not a bad idea at all. Um, uh, and everybody's got a different method, so this is just the method I'm trying to show you. Without that tape on there, what happens is the, the backing wants to move on you. So some way you need to kind of temporarily secure the, um, the backing on there. Um, so that's a suggestion on there. Um, if we could go back to the main camera for a minute. Um, so inside of a cap, you'll typically find some cardboard that holds the, uh, the crown. So this is the crown of the hat um, that, that the manufacturer of the cap puts in. Um, some people I've seen sew through this. I would suggest not doing that. And, and let me give you the reason why. Um, and once again, it's all... Uh, yeah, it's, it's all something that some people will disagree with me to the, to the time the moon comes up. But this, when you sew through it, it has a tendency to just cause a lot of extra gunk that builds up down into the hook area um, and just causes a lot more extra fuzz, if you want to call it that, not a technical term, but fuzz down in that area. So I also, wouldn't... Yeah. That one if you look at it, it is there and not there and there and yeah. not there, and I can't even begin to imagine sewing through that. Yeah, so 
Yeah, thanks, Nate. That's a good point. I'm, I mean, some of them are solid. Let me see if I can find a cap that's got it. That, that yeah. So this one here has got a solid piece in it, but still, if I take and um, if I take and tear this, you can see the fuzzy. Oh. Yeah. Let me see. I'll just walk up against the camera here and see if that. Yeah. There you go. And also but you can see how fuzzy this stuff is. So every time the needle would go in there, the, the paper of the cardboard is just going to explode every single time and just leave a lot of uh, unnecessary fuzz around your machine. So I would not sew through this. Some people say this is better than sewing through the, um, the cap backing. Some people don't sew through cap backing. They won't put cap backing in here. And so let's talk about that for a minute before I move on, um, the reason that I always put uh, backing, cap backing down, no matter what the cap is, structured or unstructured, is in the case of structured hats, this buckram back here um, can be very, very aggressive. And so when we take and sew, the thread on the average stitch is going to pass through the eye of the needle about 30 times. So it's going to go back and forth through the needle to go down make the loop with the, uh, the hook um, and the bobbin thread. And then the take-up lever is going to pull it up. And so that's going to go down through the eye of the needle and then back up. So if we don't have that backing there, it's going to take and rub against that aggressive uh, buckram, the structure of the crown of the hat, and can cause that thread to almost um, start shredding on you, uh, what we call a shred break, where it looks like a, like one of those old uh, weevily worms that kind of fuzz up the, the needle. So I always suggest that you use a piece of backing, no matter what kind of hat it is, just so that you don't have that problem of where the thread starts to shred. I'm scattered enough that I will use backing uh, uh, as insurance. Uh, if I sew it in the wrong color or something, I have something to cut against instead of cutting against the fabric or the garment, and I, I just don't want to do that. So I always use it for insurance. Um, yeah, and it, it just makes a cleaner stitch. Ah, that's a good point. I never thought of it that way, but yeah, so what Nate's talking about, if, you, if, if you've never made a mistake sewing, it will happen good. to you eventually. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the first one. Congratulations. Go play the lotto tonight. Um, but you can use like a, a flat blade ra uh, razor or what's it called, a Peggy stitch eraser. Um, and you can take and cut a mistake off. But if you don't have backing against it, you're cutting that against the material. And eventually you're going to cut through that material and, and ruin the product anyway. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Nate. Awesome. So now um, the other thing is, is I'm going to have Nate post two documents in this Facebook Live session. One is going to be on digitizing. Um, we're going to touch a little bit on placement on Design Shop, but we're really not going to hit digitizing for a cap. Digitizing for a cap is really important. You're not going to want to take um, a stock design um, and shrink it down and put on a hat. Um, so read the document. Uh, it'll look like something like this on the front page. Um, so it'll also talk about you know, how large um, a design can be based off of the cap itself. Really good read. Uh, Scott Stingle wrote this, I believe, did a great job on it. Check it out. Um, or this might have been Nate, I can't remember. One of the guys in the applications team wrote it. Um, but really good read on how to digitize for it. Again, if you've got questions on it, post. Um, I'm gonna make a shout out that we haven't made for a while. Um, for the love of Melco, um, there's a great users group on Facebook called For the Love of Melco Embroidery Machines. Great, great people on there that will, if you've got questions and Melco's um, not available or you want to get another opinion, jump on that Facebook, become uh, part of the group, and ask them. And they're really, really awesome about getting back to you, a very positive group. Um, there's not a lot of trash talk going on there. They're just wonderful people. So, how to digitize. Also, there's a second document on how to hoop. Um, uh, this is not on the FAQ, but we'll get it up there. That's a good point. I was going to say that's the only way I can do it. So, I got the digitizing one up, but I don't have this one. 
Okay, so we'll get this on the FAQ ASAP. <laughs> Too many acronyms? Okay. Um, so we'll get this up there and we'll post a link later. Um, this will also be, I think it's Impressions Magazine, it's going to be uh, um, putting this out um, here pretty soon uh, as an article. So, yeah, so this one will be out there too, but we'll get it up on the FAQ and get the link to you. So, anyways, I'm going to just kind of cover some of those things as we talk. Every cap, for the most part, has some kind of bend to the bill, or if it's a skater's cap, like this Richardson hat, it doesn't, which is really nice. You can, you can post bend the mark after that. But what I like to do is before I get it onto the hat, first pull that cardboard out because we don't want to sew through it. Next, I want to take and flatten that bill out as best as I can. And the reason for that is we've got a cap that has an arch here. <laughs> And we're going to try to sew it like a cylinder. So think of a soup can. And we're going to take and roll that soup can back and forth and forward and back to put embroidery on it. But a cap is actually a sphere with an arc like the globe. Um, it's round on the top as well as round being on the side to side. Plus we have the crown or the bill of the hat is arch. So I'm trying to get rid of some of all this archiness by flattening that out, it also gives me the ability to get, if I have like a line of text or if the design is, uh, you know, more flat on the bottom, that I can get a chance that it's not crooked one way or the other. Because if I leave the arch in it, does the arch start on this side of the, the seam? Does it start on this side? Is it even on both sides? Where if I had that bill flat, that's why you get that really nice look. So really important to flatten that bill out. I see a giggle over here. Um, oh, comments. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. So flatten that bill out. The next thing is going to be is I'm going to reach in and I'm going to pull this sweatband out of my way. Um, yes, some caps have the sweatband sewn into the cap and you won't be able to do that. Not true. No? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, that's great. No, I'll quit yelling and turn on my own mic. Um, <laughs> so it is not uncommon for me if, if the sweatband is sewn in. Typically, it's sewn in in like three areas. Um, I'm actually going to step around yeah, to grab the cap. Yeah, step around. Um, so typically, um, it's sewn in kind of here-ish, here-ish, and then maybe one other place if, if, if the adjustment's not there. And usually, it's just a few stitches, and you can pull back and snip those and, and pull it without doing any damage to the cap. I don't have that kind of patience. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm just going to put just it on and go. On? That's how I work. I did not know that. Thank you, Nate. By the way, did you see Nate's cool swag Melco Applications t-shirt? <laughs> Pretty cool. So anyways, we want to get this out of the way. Why do we want to get it out of the way? The reason that we want to get it out of the way is, and I'm going to walk up on the, the camera again. In this area right down here, this is, once again, the kind of the close part of the crown to the bill. This is where everything meets up. And the last thing we need to do is have two extra layers of heavy material in our way as we're trying to get as close as we can to the bill. Keep in mind, as we try to get close to that bill, we have to have the presser foot in there, too. So that's why we can't get all the way up against the bill. But getting back to this, we want to get this out of the way so that the only thing that's holding us back from getting set right down onto the needle plate is the material that the, that's sewn into it that we can't do the Nate trick and cut apart because the hat would fall apart. Um, um, that's why we want to get it out of the way. So it's really important, once again, that we pull this out of the way and instead of leaving it in place. So... Let me, uh, let me go ahead and move back now. And so now that we've got this out of the way, um, some people will take, if, if it's an adjustment cap, they'll take and unsnap it in the back. I don't like to do that, and you'll see why here in a minute. Um, so if we change to one of those nifty, oh, sorry, too many things going on. Um, yeah, that's great. So what I'm going to do is as I come into this guy, you can still see um, 
that I've got that sweatband pulled out and I usually will come in from the top and pull down. So I'm going to just come in, make sure that my hat gets all the way around and then I'm going to kind of shift it in until the backstop, that's this part here, the um, frame, I don't know if that's its technical term, bill stop, I call it a backstop, bill stop is pressing against the bill. Imagine that, so it's stopping the bill. So I'm pushing that up, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm taking the seam. We need like a fourth camera from I figured that out the aerial. We need like a drone or something, a little helicopter flying around in here. I'm going to take and set the hat off center just a little bit to the left, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So the, the um, bill stop has a little red line showing us the center. I guess I could turn this off. <laughs> awesome. One more? Yeah. So you see this um, red line. That's the center of the cap, what we want to try to line up to. But what I'm doing is I'm pulling the cap off to the left. You don't want to rotate the gauge to do this. We're just doing that to show you. So I'm going to, yeah, it would, it would definitely add challenge to it. If, so if you're up for challenge, go ahead and rotate that around and see how that works for you. So just kidding. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that back in place. The next thing I like to do, and once again, a lot of people have different ways of doing things. I like to take my left hand and I like to take and hold down the hat at the bottom um, so that my right hand is free to reach around and grab the strap. So I'll take and make sure that my hat is straight, that it's off slightly center to the left. And the reason I do that is as I take my strap and put over, when I latch it shut, it's it's, um, it's when the strap is tight and it's uh, locked in place, it's going to naturally pull the hat slightly to the right as I latch it shut because it's going to take and shift. Um, once I have that in place, I can look around the sides. If I'm doing embroidery on the sides, it's important that I get that tucked in. In this case, we're not doing that, so it's not as important. But I always take and make sure that if I run my finger across this on a new model of uh, cap, so let's say this is the first model of this one I'm done, I'm going to run my finger against this strap. And if I see a wave, let me loosen it up a little bit so you see the wave. Um, this will tell me that it's too loose. So let me loosen it up just a little bit. And so you'll see that there's a wave. See how that bubbled out there? Um, yeah, are you on that side? Yep, okay. So you can see a bubble. We want to take, if you see that, you want to take and loosen, loosen these two butterfly nuts up and just take and press down and then tighten it up. So I'm still, if we switch to the other camera, I'm still got the latches unlatched. So we haven't latched that latch yet. What will help tremendously after you tighten that down, I see a lot of people struggle. They'll have their hands off here and they go, oh man, I can't snap this guy shut. If you take and hold down once again with your left hand on the back of the hat, and if it's a fitted hat, you can just reach in there and do that. If you pull down, that's going to help ease the pressure that it takes to latch that latch. If you don't do that, you can see how hard that is for me to shut versus holding down. I can almost do it with one finger. So if it's really, really hard, try this method. Try pulling down with the left hand or left, yeah, the left hand with your thumb and latching that shut. Once I've done that, my method of taking it off the cap gauge is taking and putting my palms against the edge of the gauge, wrapping my fingers around this, uh, this rim here, and then I'm, all I'm going to do is compress my fingers to my palms. So I'm just going to go boom, like that, and it's going to pull out, and my tape is still there, and my backing is in place and everything is good to go. So hooping caps, really important. Um, if, the, if the strap, if you don't tighten it down, you get that wave in it and then you latch it shut, the cap is going to have a chance to move. You know, we're, the only thing literally that we're holding the cap in place with on the wide angle frame is the strap. And then if we use the clips on the side, these two points in the back. So if if that strap is loose, it's, it's like having a hoop when we're hooping flat material. It's like hooping it really, really loose and expecting to get perfect 
registration out of our embroidery. It's not going to happen. We're going to get poor quality stitches. We're going to get thread breaks, possibly needle breaks. Um, just craziness is going to happen. Cats will start sleeping with dogs. It'll be a horrible rule. So tighten up their straps and, and sew good hat quality, okay? Um, once we're done with that, to put it onto the machine, um, and I know I didn't have this uh, ready, so Nate's going to do some quick camera movement for me. Um, we're going to talk about how to put it onto the machine. Um, sounds simple, but I've seen so many people struggle with this. Um, they'll come up and they'll try to, um, we're going to change this camera angle. There we go. Thank you, Nate. Um, they'll come in, they'll try to get, and it's like the machine's in the way. So just take and turn the bill to one side or the other. In this case, we'll turn it this way so you guys can see it. I'll turn it like that, and then once it gets past the needle case and the grabber, then I can take and turn it up, and then if you just start sliding it, you'll feel it hit the grooves, and let me show you what I'm talking about grooves. There's some notches right in here. Let's see if I can do this. This is pretty difficult, guys. Um, there's these two notches right here that as I pull back out, there's two little um, pinchers here and then one down here that uh, clamp in that hold the cap in place. So once again, just turn the cap sideways, slide it until you feel that groove hit, and then I'm going to do just the opposite of what I did with the gauge. So I'm going to use my um, thumbs on the rim, um, on that uh, rim of that uh, cap uh, frame, and I'm going to put my fingers on the back of the driver. Now let me back up a second. This red thing here, this is called the cap driver. So I'm going to take and put it on. I'm going to put my thumbs on there to my fingers, and then I'm going to just take and collapse my fingers shut. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and just do a little tug with my fingers here, and I'm going to reach down below and make sure that it's clipped all the way around. Um, a lot of times, you won't get it on all the way, and so, and this one is actually really, really um, good, um, but you'll get it where it misses the bottom, and you can see how much flop I've got back and forth. It's not really showing up there, but you really want to make sure that it's, it's clipped in down below and all three clips. So let me do that one more time. So it's off, turn it sideways, up, in place, and just make sure before you pull off that you're in all three places and then your hands are out of the way. Cool. Um, we're actually not going to sew a hat today. I want to show you some different hats, but I really want to talk about hooping different styles, using different styles with different types of cat frames, different types of styles of hats. So, um, yeah, uh, that's how we added on there. Um, another great cat frame uh, made by Hoop Tech. And a lot of people like this one. I've, I've seen some chatter on For the Love of Melco Embroidery. A lot of people love it, a lot, some people hate it, um, but this is called the Gen 2 EMS Hoop Tech. Um, and so what this does is this only allows us to sew the front, um, front two panels, or if it's a five panel hat, the front panel of the hat. Um, but what it does is instead of just holding it down below, like the wide angle cap frame does, it actually has, let me open it up, it's got some claws that come up on either side, so it's, hand, uh, it's clamping it down on the bottom between the bill and the crown, and also on the sides of the crown up front. So it's holding it in two or three different places, bottom, left, and right. And then when you close this guy, it actually will take and it'll deflect the, the bill down so that it, it's not up and in your way. So if you're only doing fronts of caps all the time, never doing um, sides, um, a lot of people like this. Uh, I am myself not a fan of this because I grew up using the wide angle cap frame and I've taught myself how to do everything with it. Um, but I can tell you there's a lot of people that swear up and down by this. So um, if you've not seen one, um, get to a show and check them out. They're really cool. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Great request. Who'd that request come from? I don't know. Well, thank you for the request. Cheryl. Cheryl, thank you for the request. So on 
unstructured hats. Let me just open this guy up. The difference that I would do is I would actually use two pieces of uh, the cap tearaway backing. And what I would do is I would have one piece down on the hat uh, or on the gauge and the frame like we did before. So I would treat it just like I treat a, a structured hat. But the other thing I would do is I would want to, I want to trick the machine into thinking that this is a structured hat while I'm sewing it. And the reason for that is as we look at this, you can see how much flop is in this hat. So even if I'm holding it with the strap really tight here, look how much wobble I've got up here. So I would want to take another piece of the tearaway backing, and let me just tear a little piece of this guy off. Um, and I would take, and I don't know that we have spray adhesive in here, and it'll really smell great in here. Nate will love me for this, but I would take, and let me just do it. Let me grab that spray adhesive. Ew. So, Not by my cameras. I won't do it by your cameras. Um, I'll try to do it closer to the floor, but I would take and put some light um, fabric slash embroidery adhesive. Please do not use 3M adhesive um, or the heavy duty spray adhesive. You'll gum up your needles and your machine really, really fast. So make sure that it is embroidery slash fabric adhesive. So once I have that done, all I'm gonna do is um, take and flatten out my bill again. I'm going to take and put this in and make the cap into a structured cap while we sew it. And then I'll take and tear all that out once I'm done. But I'll show you why once I get done with it. You'll have to work um, your hand back and forth a little bit just to get some of the wrinkles out so that you don't have wrinkles like uh, what I had right there. And just work that guy around until you get it all in right place. Structured, unstructured hats are not the greatest thing, but if it's requested, you want to be able to do them, right? So with that in place, you can see that we have a whole lot more rigidity on the hat. So all of a sudden, our unstructured hat is going to sew like a structured hat. So we're not going to have as much registration issues or um, movement of the design because the hat is flopping back and forth. When, when you're using uh, large pieces of backing for the 270 degree frame and you're only sewing in the middle, you have those sides. Those sides are great for just what he just did. I throw them in a pile and that's what I use them for. I use them to either use them for that or for cuff monograms or things like that. So don't pitch those sides. Um, this is a great use for it. Yeah. And pay no attention to the man in front of the camera. Listen to the man behind the camera. Unstructured hats are just fine. I know them all the time. Once again, everybody's got an opinion. I, so, but really, um, you want, if you do unstructured hats, you want to make the machine sew like a structured hat. If you want to get that good quality look, use a piece of um, tearaway backing in there, adhere it to the cap, and then take and put a secondary piece of cap backing down on the gauge in the frame, and then we'll go ahead and bring it in, just like we did the structured hat. And I'm gonna just make sure that I am off a little bit to the left again. So when I reach around with my right hand and I snap this down, that we have that uh, centered correctly. And so let me get around there, there we go. Um, and I missed this side, let me get that out of there. Let me pull this in a little bit, there we go. Um, once we have that in place, uh, once again, I'm gonna check to see because it's a new cap and I'm getting a little bit of wave, so I'm gonna tighten it down. I wouldn't do this every single cap of the same style, but if it's a new style cap, like we went from the Richardson to this unstructured, I would go ahead and check that, um, that strap before you click it down and make sure that it's as taut um, and it doesn't have that wave in it. Once you've done that, once again, I'm gonna pull down from the bottom, I'm gonna snap it shut, and then if I'm going to add the clips to it, I'm gonna take and just hold on with my left hand. Right hand, I'm gonna push that clip down. I'm gonna rotate it up so I can get to the back. So much smarter than the way I do it. And I'm just gonna add my clips to it. I'm gonna pull one side tight. 
Everybody's got a different method, right, Nate? Work better than mine. Well, that's the first. Please write that down. Yeah. Nate usually has the most creative ways of doing things, and I learned from him. So, um, so then I'm going to just take and put my clips on there. And then again, I'm going to take and rotate. And I have a tendency, I'm uh, ambidextrous, so I, I have a tendency to do things with both hands. But if you're dominant with something, you may find kind of a different method to do it. So again, I'm going to take and put my palms against the outside of that gauge, my fingers on the uh, rim of the frame. And I'm going to pull it tight and pull it off. And this adhesive here, um, this double stick tape, the cool thing is, is you can take that as it wears out and you need a new piece it comes off that pretty dang easy. I've seen people use like, um, a, oh, this way, thank you. I've seen people use other skinnier tape. Um, I've seen them use some, uh, like a, that little uh, rubber silicone stuff that's sticky. So it doesn't have to be carpet tape, but that's what I decided to show you with today. It does have to be thin enough to go under the carpet. Yeah, so it, it can't be, as you look at the gauge, it can't be um, more than half the thickness of this inner rib of the, uh, of the gauge. So once again, gauge, frame, and then the red ring on the machine as a driver, just so we have the three pieces down. So uh, Joan was talking about using a piece of cutaway and a piece of tearaway on a cap. Have I ever tried it? Um, yes, I've used cutaway on a hat. I didn't enjoy it because I don't like I'm lazy and I didn't want to get scissors inside of there, but um, the only time I've really done it was when I had a client who did not have hair and preferred to not have tear away. <laughs> um, so yes, I have done it. It does work. I just am too lazy to deal with scissors inside of a cap. Yeah, good good question. Um, I think that would be pretty tough as, as I look at a cap, and I've never been asked that question, but it's a good question. But if I had to get around the cutaway backing inside that you know, try to get a pair of scissors around the backing. You can see how hard that would be. And you definitely, if you've, if you've not done it, don't do it. <laughs> don't grab cutaway and try to pull it away like it's tear away because that's not a good idea. It'll, it'll actually suck the stitches and sometimes rip the material as you're trying to pull that away. So don't take cutaway and treat it like tear away. You, you've got to cut it out. That's why it's called cutaway. So. We, we did have another Oh, well, I, I'm sorry. We will, we will, we will, uh, we will keep you anonymous. You've learned one of the embroidery. Uh, Not the pull. You use cutaway. Oh, oh, okay. Well, don't cut it. Cut it. Don't pull it. So it's not pull away. It's cut away. <laughs> so yeah, that there is our uh, what we would do for a unstructured hat. I know it's an extra step, um, but you are going to be so much more grateful when you go to sew this than if you would have just not adhered a piece of backing to it to give it structure. It would be flopping around on you so much back and forth. There's no way that you would get good registration. Another request. Sure. Uh, can you remove the driver and put it back on? Yeah, um, yeah. And you can talk full screen for a minute as you're doing it while I get the other camera set up. Sure, Thanks. you bet. So um, while we're waiting for camera setups, I am going to um, show yeah. a couple things. Oh. Never mind. I just need to move it. I'll get you out of the way. All right, so I'll just move the adhesive back into its home or close to its home. And so when removing the um, driver from the machine or putting the driver onto the machine, um, you're going to use the inner hole on the panograph unit. So there's four holes on the panograph unit. It's going to line up there. What I do is when I, and one, four on each side. there's four on each side. Yes, good point, Nate. So the inner of the four, um, and when you take the hoop arms off, and let me just grab one so everybody knows what I'm talking about. These are the hoop arms. Typically, they're on the machine um, when you're doing flats. When you take those off, it uses two of the uh, thumb screws. What I do is um, where the cap driver, back up, cap driver only uses one on either side. We use two on either side. I take the spare one so I don't lose them and I take and screw into the outer port of the, uh, um, of the panograph so that I'm not scrambling trying to find what the heck I did with the screw. So Again, much smarter than me than trying to be on hands and knees finding it under the machine. <laughs> well, that's two for the day. I, I need to go home. That's it. So 
Um, no. So once we have that, um, I will take and let me get the Allen wrench for this. Um, never over tighten your thumb screws. Um, once again, this is one of those things that a lot of us have done and wish we hadn't of, but the thumb screws only need to be taut. They don't need to be tight. Um, so the difference in that is we're talking just like an eighth of a turn to just taut it down. If you've got a good grip in your hand, if you've got strong grips in your hand, you can just tighten it as tight as you can with your hand. I don't have that kind of strength in my hands anymore, so I have to use the Allen wrench. But all we're going to do is um, I'll uh, suggest that you put it in e-stop to take it off. And then I'm going to just take and rotate, push the pantograph over. And I'm going to rotate that over just enough to where the camera's still in there. And I'm going to just reach in and loosen that bolt up. I'll just take it out. In this case, I'm going to... Just so you understand, those screws are manufactured to break before they damage your machine. Yep. So if you're, you're mad that it broke, um, it, it's much better to break that than your machine. Um, so that's why that happens. Yeah, that's, you know what, that's a great point. So if I bring this in, you'll see, uh, yep, um, you'll see right here in this area, there's actually a break point that if you over tighten, like Nate was saying, if you over tighten these and you're like Hercules tightening down these screws, instead of stripping out the pantograph unit and having to have a tech possibly come out to replace that pantograph unit, this part would bust off and you can take a pair of like vice grips, um, like a pair of pliers, and grab the bottom of the screw and unscrew it out. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it is possible, and you don't have to have a tech do it. The most important thing is, is if you use an Allen wrench, and let me just put this on here, um, and you're going down, you're going to tighten it down. Let me make sure I'm going the right way. Yep, um, you'd need about that much. So let me do that again. So I'm, I'll put it here so you can see it. Once that screw is tight, you really only need about an eighth of a turn. So you're only talking a little bit of a turn to, to make it taut, not super tight. So don't over tighten those screws. All right, we'll go back out. And I'm going to take and push the pantograph unit over a little bit. Once again, I don't bend very well anymore, so I want it to be in my position. And I just take and unscrew this other screw. And then I'm going to take and just grab the driver and I'm going to slide it off. And then as I come off, I'm going to take and angle it back a little bit so that I get under the grabber. And that's how I take it off. Typically, if I was doing sewing with something that is normal flat sewing, I would take a cloth and just wipe this uh, driver shaft off and I would leave the shaft on. I, I don't want to leave the grease on it because I don't want that residue to come off onto a garment. Oil. Yeah, oil, sorry. Thank you, Nate. Mike Doe using the wrong terminology. The oil that's on here, we don't put grease on here. Oil, oil. Um, I would wipe that down so it doesn't come off onto a customer's product or my product, and then I would just put my hoop arms on. So to put it back on? And then when you put that on, you do the oil. Yeah, so there's um, two types of blocks that that shaft goes into. So we're talking about this shaft here going into this hole here. And so if your um, if the shaft or the, the block that it goes into has a brass color on the outside, um, you'll want to take and oil it. You'll want to take and, after you get it on, put a little bit of oil in front of it and then just move the, uh, the frame forward and back and I'll show that to you here in a minute. But if yours uh, has bearings in it, little rollers inside of it, instead of just solid brass, um, uh, you do not want to oil that. It's, it's self-oiled and you don't need to put oil in there. You do want to clean the shaft um, because it will leave residue and it'll pick up lint and stuff. So definitely do that. But if, if yours is brass like this, take and oil it and I'll show you how to move it back and forth. Any questions before I put it back on? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually cut down. Yep. Here comes Nate. <laughs> um, so one of the other questions while this was off um, was about the maintenance for this, and I realize I'm kind of all over the place. But, so let me move out of your way. Um, so this maintenance is one thing, and then 
it's been a while since I wrote it. I think it's about yearly. You'll want to maintain the driver itself. And to do that, you just take it off the machine, you slide it, you clean any lint and gunk out of Maybe these Q-tips areas in here. I use a, I don't use linty stuff. Oh, okay. So I try to, I wad up non-linting fabric and, um, like broadcloth or something. Like broadcloth. I also okay. will use like a, like an orange peel stick or a chopstick. Put it inside the the fabric to get into those grooves a little bit more. Hmm. Come down there and then you reapply the grease. Um, and then I do it again on the other side, and then just run it back and forth. Make sure you're not going to drip anything on. Like, don't go oh, crazy with it. the grease. Gotcha. Um, but uh, you can see this one isn't uh, a colored grease, but you can see if I get the shine just right, you can see a little bit of, of that line of grease. So that's all you're doing is cleaning that up. Um, as you go, as you create lint, as you do all of that, it's just going to get kind of linty and gross. So you just want to clean that out and then regrease it. Um, and all of that is in the user manual um, as far as what kind of grease, how much, where, all of that is oh, cool. in there. So just, I'm going to get so out of your way. So that's you in the install. operator's manual? Uh-huh. Awesome. And so if I wanted to find that, if I did a search for it, would that be just like cap driver maintenance, do you think? Probably. We'll, what we'll do is we'll take and uh, I'll have Nate look that up when we're done. And I'll have him put a comment of where you can find it in the operator's manual. Or Scott, Scott's on there. Maybe, uh, maybe we can just say, you know, what the search term is or what it's under. That would be great, Scott. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, maintaining the driver is really important. Um, this guy goes back and forth a lot and forward and back. So, we always think about oiling this guy for forward and back. And that was great. Whoever asked that question about the maintenance on this, or if Nate just thought of it, no, great. No, it was down there. I just can't scroll back up. Okay. Well, whoever it was, great thought. Thank you for that. Um, the other thing that Melko is actually going to be talking about soon is this cable here. Um, and we're finding that this cable can start, uh, will loosen up a little bit on you. Um, and there's a way to tighten it. So we're going to write a procedure. Um, you should see it probably in the next month or so on how to tighten this cable. Um, it's not huge. It's not very big, but it's important as part of that maintenance to keep that cable tight. Cool? So then we've talked about that. Um, I would not put oil on the shaft yet. I, I don't like to do that. I'll take and put this back on there. Once again, careful that you don't catch the needles or the grabber. Can you close the grabber? Yeah, you could close the grabber if you wanted to. Yep, yeah. yeah, you could close the grabber for sure. It was out of the way. I know you were stressing on that. I was really stressing. Yep, no, I was, I was clear of it. I've done that before. Um, so once I have it on, um, before I do anything of oil in the shaft, I'm going to go ahead and find that inner hole on either side. And I, what I do is I'll put a screw in there, and I'll use my fingers as kind of my locator. Um, once again, because I don't bend very well, I'll do that. And once I find that spot... I'll just go ahead and start that screw. I won't tighten that screw completely down yet. That's exactly what I was going to say. I, yep. if, if I tighten one, I cannot, like, I don't know why, but I can't do the other one. So I start one and then go start the other, and then I tighten them down. Yep, good good point, Nate. So same thing over here. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and, once again, move this over a little bit. I'm in e-stop right now. Um, e-stop is that round button on the keypad. You can just push it in, and then you can freely move the, uh, the pantograph. So once I have them in, once again, because I don't have a great grip on my, um, with my strength of my hands, I'll take and I'll put my Allen um, wrench on there, and I will just lightly, about an eighth of a turn, the twist, to tighten it, uh, or tot it, not tighten it. Uh, don't over tight it. So I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> so. Uh, once I'm done, I'm going to just take and I'll have uh, Nate come out so everybody knows where the e-stop is. And we'll just talk about that momentarily. So the e-stop is this round button on the keypad. Yep. We're going to zoom in. Camera one, camera two. <laughs> so here we are. So this is the e-stop. So to engage it, you push it in and you'll see. I don't know if you can see this or not. Yeah, you can sort of see it. See the light is green. And when I press it in, the light turns red. So to engage it, you press in and then see the arrows. 
You just have to lightly rotate it to the right, and it pops out. The light turns back green, um, and that's engaging and disengaging your e-stop button. Um, that helps a lot if you need to get underneath it um, and move the pantograph uh, around. Um, yeah, and so now what I would do is I would take and get my oiler, and let me see if I can find my oiler in this room. Is it right behind me? No. Boom. Yeah, the last time they had it hidden in here for me. There it is. Um, so I would take my oiler, uh, and I would take and just right against this, this brass block, I would just take and just be generous with the oil there. You don't have to be conservative. And then I'm going to take and push the hoop button, the frame button, and I'm going to push the up button, and it's going to move out. And then at the same time, I'm going to go behind it, which you won't be able to see because we don't have it behind the machine cam. I want to mention something yep. that I think we forgot. I don't remember, but it's so important. If we did, I want to say it twice. Make sure that you select the wide angle cap frame in your software before loading it and, oh. and center the hoop before you load the driver, all that kind of stuff. Let's, um, you know what, let's uh, shelf that and come back. So I got this guy oiled. All I'm going to do is take and move the, uh, um, uh, the driver back and forth by pushing the frame up and down um, and just really get that oil in there. Um, if you see an excessive amount of chatter where the driver is bouncing back and forth, in the manual there's information on how to um, adjust the cap driver to the machine. We don't want to see the driver skipping um, or stuttering across there. It should smoothly move back and forth on that um, that shaft down below. And that adjustment process sounds scary, but it's not. It's no. not at all. No, it's not scary. Um, it, it is Nate or Mike Doe worthy of being able to do without without getting a cool technician like Samantha involved or Mark Davis So or any of you other cool technicians. So let's bounce back to the screen for a minute, Nate. The screen capture. Sorry. Oops. Here we go. Cool. So what Nate was talking about is before you take and put the red, um, your wide angle cap driver on the machine, make sure that you select this red WACF or if you're super old school with some of our really cool legacy equipment, it may say graphite WACF I think it is or gray or something like that. Graphite, and, and that's not the color of the frame. That is the color of the driver. So the driver that you saw us using earlier today or during this session is this lovely red. Um, older ones were a darker graphite color, so if that's the one that you have, that's the one that you need to select. And if you don't see that, you can customize your hoop list and turn off the red ones and turn on the graphite ones so that you see the hoops that you have. Also, that information on how to do what Nate just talked about, plus the adjustments, all in the Melco service FAQ stuff. Um, Dan Sweeney and his team does a super job on that FAQ. So if you got questions on things, go in there, uh, melco-service.com, click on the FAQ on the left side, and then just type in, like, change cap driver, or just put in driver, and a whole list of things will come up with all kinds of instructions or links back to the manual, or if we've done some videos to it, there might be links to videos to it as well. So good job, Dan. Kudos to you. But um, make sure that you have that red WACF selected um, before you put the cap driver on in the machine. Once you have that on and your machine is on, then you're good to go ahead and put the red um, or your driver on. Um, one thing that I would mention is it's important to have the machine booted up as well. Um, don't do it, you know, off, put the ring on, and you were sewing the largest sew field that we had. Make sure that your machine is on, the, um, you know, the correct wide angle cap frame is selected, uh, and then put your driver on. You'll be, you'll be a happy camper for that. We're running really short on time, but I want to show a couple more things. Nate, right behind you is a couple of the back uh, cap clamps. Yep. And so we didn't get to it in this, um, 
but there's some really cool um, uh, back of cap clamps. Um, in some cases, if I only have a small, a small run to do of hats, I can use a, a, fat, a flat um, hoop to do it. Um, but if I'm going to do a lot of them, I would prefer to have one of these guys. And what we'll do is we'll earmark this as an, another video is um, sewing on like the sides of caps, the back of cap. We had intention of showing you a uh, visor, um, but it'll have to be a teaser for another video. So other than that, Nate, do we have any other questions? I think we're pretty good. I want to be the first to wish you all a, a very nice weekend. Hopefully everything is good. Have any questions, Melko's here for you, and you all have a good day.